Hey there, welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Julian, your brain's player too. Fans of fighting games and yellow spiky hair rejoice. Dragon Ball Fighters is finally out, letting us take control of our favorite heroes and villains. Stringing together unforgiving combos and launching into beautifully animated super attacks taken from the iconic anime. In the series, key charge techniques like Frieza's Death Ball are known to be powerful enough to destroy whole planets. But how much key would this iconic villain of Dragon Ball Z have to channel in order to destroy our planet Earth? Next time on Play Noggin Z. Oh, we're just going to do it right now. Okay, cool. If we take the classic DBZ route and attempt to blow Earth into a bajillion pieces while screaming at the top of our lungs, then we need to calculate how much ki, or energy, we'd need to overcome the combined gravitational binding energy of all those pieces of our planet. That sounds complicated, but it's not. Basically, to blow a planet into chunks hurtling through space, you'd need to use enough energy to get each piece moving fast enough to overcome the gravitational pull of all the other pieces. All objects with mass pull on other objects. Even you and I have a very slight gravitational pull. So if you have low self-esteem, I have great news. According to science, you are attractive. To launch an object hard enough it escapes Earth's gravity, you would need to fling it at 40,284 kilometers per hour. Now imagine doing that with everything on Earth, throwing the entire planet into space piece by piece. To figure out how much energy that all adds up to, we can use the equation 3 gm squared over 5r, where m is the mass of the planet, r is the planet's radius, and g is the gravitational constant. Assuming the Earth is uniform density, when you plug in its mass and radius, the energy it would take to fling it into space one chunk at a time is 2.25 times 10 to the 32 joules. That's 225 with 30 zeros after it. That's well over 9,000. To put that in perspective, it would take our sun nearly an entire week to output that much energy. And yet, Frieza has that at the tip of his finger. That's not just star power, that's dying star power. Massive stars that are at least 8 to 15 times the mass of our sun can collapse in on themselves at the end of their lives. Their cores get compressed by their own enormous gravitational pull until the atoms repel each other so violently it rips the star apart. As the core explodes, the outgoing matter collides with the outside of the star that was still being sucked towards the core, smashing them together into super heavy elements and releasing yet more energy. In an instant, the dying star releases as much energy as our sun will produce over its entire 10 billion year lifespan. It's called a type 2 supernova, and yep, supernova is one of the names given in reference to the juiced up death ball technique Frieza used to destroy planet Vegeta. It's crazy to think that Frieza's planet-destroying power levels are child's play compared to the strength of the newer villains of the Dragon Ball Super series. It's ridiculous. It's over the top. It's insane and completely unnecessary. It's why we love Dragon Ball Z. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe. If our planet gets blown up, could we up and move to a new one? Check out our video on Mass Effect Andromeda to find out. And don't forget to keep on playing.